welcome all myself ashi joshi i am working as a scientist in the photogrammetric and remote sensing department at irs dehradun in this lecture you will learn about the basic principles of remote sensing earth observation sensor and image formation in this course basically uh, what you will learn you will learn about the deep learning and machine learning techniques for the images so before going to that course we, we will have some basic principles of images how the remote sensing works and what are the different earth observation sensors and platforms are there okay so we will start from remote sensing so what is remote sensing so by definition it is the science and the art of obtaining the information about an object area or phenomena through the analysis of data acquired by a device that is not in contact with the object area or phenomena under investigation okay so what it means means we want to gather the information of any object without being in contact with it okay so we need some of the sensor to collect the information and some medium to collect the different uh, information about the object okay so we have not been in the contact with the object okay so that is called the remote sensing in our uh, daily life we are doing the remote sensing means if we want to see any object then our eyes are the remote sensor okay so we are observing anything and uh, the sensor is our eyes okay and we are uh, making some information through the data processing in our mind okay so our brain is a data processor okay so in our daily life we are doing some kind of remote sensing so what are the different components of remote sensing so here we can see we should have some energy source if we have the passive remote sensing so we should have the some energy source and the medium to carry the energy source which is called the radiation okay so first is some energy source should be there secondly we should have some medium which is called the electromagnetic radiation okay so these electromagnetic radiations interact with the target okay then the energy is reflected back towards the sensor so this is the sensor so this sensor will collect the information okay and this information can be made in the form of the satellite images or one dimension profile data then these images or the profile data is again transmitted back to the ground station so this is some of the raw data it will transmit okay then we have to do in the ground some data processing so after the data processing it is the some products are generated and it can be given for the analysis and the different applications can be made from the satellite data so these are some of the basic components of the remote sensing using the satellite based imaging sensor through the satellites okay now what are the basic components of the remote sensing so if we want to do the remote sensing so basic components are the one is the sensor second is the electromagnetic radiation third is the object okay so what is the use of the sensor through the sensor information about the object is obtained so in the remote sensing the sensors are not in the direct contact with the objects or the events being observed okay so if and uh, this is the object and we want to gather some uh, information about this object then we need some sensor okay so this is the sensor now to gather the information to, uh, then we need some medium so uh, what is the medium the medium is the electromagnetic radiation so what is the electromagnetic radiation the information needs a physical carrier to travel from the objects or the events to the sensor through a medium okay then the electromagnetic radiation is normally used as an information carrier in 
removes sense. Okay. So basic three components means one, so one is the sensor, second is the uh, object to be sensed, and third is the electromagnetic radiation, which is the medium uh, information carrier between the sensor and the object to be sensed. Okay, so these are three components of the remote sensor. So what does a sensor measure? Means how it will measure uh, the uh, different components uh, and the information about the object. So it will either the reflected energy from the earth or the scattered energy from the earth and third either from the emitted energy from the earth. Okay, means uh, if the sun is the source of energy, then uh, the energy is reflected from the different targets in the earth, then this is called the reflected energy or the energy can be scattered in number of directions. Okay, in the reflection case, it will directly uh, directly follow the principle of the snail's law. Okay, in the scattered energy, in every direction, the energy is reflected. And what is the emitted energy? Emitted energy means the uh, solar energy after being absorbed by the earth after some time it will again emit the energy in the form of the heat okay so these three type of energy basically a sensor will measure in the remote sensing either it is in the form of the reflected energy or the scattered energy or the emitted energy so different type of sensor we will make to gather this energy so optical infrared sensor will and gather the energy from the reflected energy. Emitted energy can be gathered by the thermal sensors and scattered, the backscatter energy can be gathered by the microwave sensors. So, and the second component is the electromagnetic radiation. So, what is the electromagnetic radiation? Electromagnetic radiation travels in the form of wave. So, this is the wave theory okay so electromagnetic radiation travels in the waves the form in the form of the electro electric and the magnetic fields that make a electromagnetic waves okay so this is the direction of the electromagnetic radiation if we will uh, if, if we will see in the form of the wave so it has two component one is the electric field component and another is the magnetic field component basically we will uh, take the electric field component because the magnetic field component can be derived from the Maxwell equation. Okay, so this is the wave theory and the speed of the light is given by the C is equals to lambda nu, where lambda is the wavelength and nu is the frequency. So this is the, the formulation like speed is equals to distance upon time. Okay, so here you can see this is the wave, then the distance between two successive crests is called the lambda. Okay or the wavelength okay so here you can see the wavelength is higher and here the wavelength is the shorter okay and the wavelength and frequency have the inverse relation means the uh, if, if the lambda is high then the frequency will be lesser okay so this is the uh, relationship between the wavelength and frequency so wavelength is given by the speed of light by frequency so here you can see this is the high frequency wave and here the wavelength is the shorter and this is the low frequency wave and uh, it has the longer wavelength okay so the wavelength is the distance between the successive crest of the wave and the frequency is the number of the waves that pass through a fixed point in unit time so another theory is the particle theory so first is the wave theory of the electromagnetic radiation Second is the particle theory. So particle theory or the quantum theory suggests that the electromagnetic radiation is composed of the many discrete units called the photons. Okay, these energy is derived as the H nu. Okay, so energy of the photon is derived as the H nu. Okay, so uh, basically we will combine this uh, both theory, wave and particle theory, then we can get the energy of the uh, electromagnetic radiation as h is equal to c by lambda okay we are deriving the new value from here and putting here so energy is given by the h is equal uh, energy is equal to h c by 
lambda. So this is the energy of photons. So in our remote sensing, if we were talking about the optical images, and uh, so the energy is given, solar energy is given by this formula. Means this um, energy is uh, 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 sensed by the uh, any target in the earth surface. Okay. Uh, so how the our electromagnetic spectrum look like so here we can see this is the entire range of the electromagnetic radiation so it will uh, um, uh, it will expand from the gamma ray to the radio waves okay so here the our where our eyes will see which is called the visible spectrum okay it's uh, uh, varies from 0.4 micrometer to 0.7 micrometer so this is the spectrum of the uh, where our eyes will see. This is called the visible spectrum. So in the remote sensing, what we will see our optical images or we will see the, our any Google images or Google Earth images where we will see a number of satellite images. So where uh, it is, you, which spectrum it is using, it is basically using the spectrum of the visible spectrum. Okay, so as the, we will see our eyes, that type of satellite images are being sensed by the sensors okay so from here and this is the electromagnetic spectrum so we can see here the wavelength will be shorter and here is the higher so here it, it, this is the visible spectrum so our basically remote sensing will work on the visible uh, spectrum infrared spectrum and the microwave spectrum so here in the visible spectrum what type of sensor we will use an optical infrared sensor in this visible and infrared uh, region. In infrared, we will use the basically the thermal sensors in the uh, if it is a thermal IR. And in the microwave, basically what we will use, we will use the synthetic aperture radar. So synthetic aperture radar also create the different type of images. Okay. So actually, uh, what I have told, like uh, our remote sensing will work in the electromagnetic spectrum, but in that also, some uh, gases in the uh, atmosphere absorb the electromagnetic energy in very specific regions of the spectrum. So if this is the our electromagnetic spectrum, so here you can see this is the visible because our remote sensing will uh, work basically in the visible spectrum or infrared or the microwave region. But in some of the portion, the electromagnetic energy is absorbed by the atmospheric gases, it means like H2O, CO2, uh, ozone. So these are here we cannot do any remote sensing. So those areas of the spectrum which are not influenced by the electromagnetic absorption and those are used to remote sensors are called the atmospheric windows. So these type of windows where we will do uh, the remote sensing and which are not influenced by the atmospheric gases is called the atmospheric windows. So only on these electromagnetic uh, ranges we will do our remote sensing. So these are called the atmospheric windows means uh, the uh, portion of the electromagnetic spectrum which are not influenced by the uh, atmospheric gases that is portion of the electromagnetic spectrum are called the atmospheric windows for doing the remote sensing. Okay, so as I told, there are three type of uh, reason. One is the visible reason. So what is the uh, characteristics of the visible reason? The light with our eyes, our remote sensors can detect is a part of the visible spectrum. Means what I we will see next, uh, in our daily life, which with is uh, exist in the visible spectrum okay and the visible wa wavelengths cover a range of approximately 0.7 to 0.4 to 0.7 micrometer so this is the range of the uh, wavelength of the visible spectrum the longest uh, visible spectrum is the red and the shortest is the violet okay so this is the uh, our, uh, visible range uh, electromagnetic spectrum so here it is uh, varying from 0.4 to 0.7 micrometer which start from the violet to the red okay so this is the 
visible range and our optical remote sensing basically works in this visible spectrum only means but our photographs in normal uh, uh, like mobile uh, mobile cameras also work in the visible spectrum uh, okay so these uh, are our satellite images like um, cartosat or econos they all work in the visible spectrum only uh, okay Second is the infrared sensor. Okay, so infrared region uh, uh, is actually from the uh, spectrum from the 0.7 micrometer to the 100 micrometer. Okay, so it also have two parts. One is the reflected infrared and second is the thermal infrared. So reflected infrared is used by our normal optical uh, sensors. And this thermal IR is used by the our thermal sensors. So in the thermal infrared, what it, energy it will uh, sense? It will sense the emitted energy. Okay. So there are the two uh, energies. One is the reflected energy and second is the emitted energy. Reflected energy means simply the energy is reflected according to the snail stock and it is gathered by the uh, satellite, uh, satellite sensor uh, or any optical sensor. Okay. So that is called the reflected IR. But the thermal IR is it is uh, observed by the like emitted radiation means the Earth's surface is absorbing some of the solar energy and after some time it is also emitting the energy. So that emitting energy is a form of the heat and this heat energy is sensed by the thermal sensors. So from that sensor also we will make the thermal images. Okay, so that is called the thermal IR. So in the infrared region, basically there are two things. One is reflected IR and second is the thermal IR. Okay, in the reflected IR, normal optical remote sensing will work. But in the thermal IR, we will use the thermal sensors. And third is the microwave region. Okay, so after the thermal region, the longest wavelength occurs in the microwave region. So in this microwave region, the wavelength will have from 1 millimeter to 1 meter means maximum wavelengths. Okay, so in case of uh, uh, microwave diesel, we cannot use simple lenses or uh, mirrors to uh, take the images. Okay, because the wavelength is very much uh, larger. Okay, so uh, due to this actually longer wavelength, microwave radiation can penetrate through fog and the haze. Okay. So this, that is the advantage of the microwave region. Means uh, like optical region, it is uh, actually the cloud and haze will affect our satellite images. But if we will take the images in the microwave region, uh, there is no effect of cloud or uh, fog or haze. Okay. So in the microwave region, what we will use? We will use the antenna to uh, focus the image. Okay, so antenna is used to generate the uh, images. So what type of antenna? Because uh, it will use, it is using the synthetic aperture radar. Okay, so this synthetic aperture radar uses different algorithms to focus the image and to generate the high resolution images in the microwave region. Okay, so basically our remote sensing or remote sensing images will have three type of region. One is the visible region, where normal optical images will form. Second is the thermal region, where the thermal images will form. And third is the microwave region, where the SAR images will form. Okay, so these are three type of remote sensing images uh, we will see, okay. So uh, basically we will do the remote sensing from different, different platforms, okay. So it can be of ground-based, it can be an airborne or UAV or the satellite. So if we want to sense any object, so in the ground, we can take the photograph. So it is the simple ground-based remote sensing. Means if we want to gather some information about the object, so simply in ground, we will take the capture. We will take the image, but the area coverage is lesser. So if we want to have a larger area to be imaged, then we will use some sensor at some height. So we can either use the UAV or any aerial platform to have the images of some uh, area. So it has some uh, localized area we can sense. But uh, if we want to have a global coverage, then we will use the satellite. Okay. 
So on the satellite, we will take the images or we will do the satellite based remote sensing. Okay, so different different platform we can use for the, uh, having uh, the remote sensing. So we can use the ground based remote sensing platform. We can use the airborne UAV or the satellites. Okay, so for the global coverage, we will use the satellites. Okay, and if we want a small area to be image, and uh, if we want quick uh, quick uh, uh, want some images in a quick time. Then we will use the UAV type of thing. So uh, basically, how what are the different sensors we can use? They are uh, passive sensors or the active sensor. So what are the passive sensor and the active sensor? So passive sensors record the energy reflected or emitted by the target, normal photography or most optical sensors. Okay means the passive sensors are like it needs some medium or like sun it need to have the uh, to form any images so this is called the passive sensor so if uh, it will basically measures the either the reflect uh, reflected energy okay and uh, or like if it uh, it is in the form of the thermal radiation so it is also send the emitted energy so that is also the passive sensor and what is the active sensor? The active sensor illuminates target with, uh, with own energy and measure the scattered or the reflected energy. So what are the active sensor? Means it will emit the electromagnetic radiations. Okay, so it will use either the radar or the SAR for imaging purpose. Okay, so these are the active sensor means it will emit the electromagnetic radiations and these uh, as, uh, and use to create the different type of images. Okay, like SAR or LIDAR. SAR is the synthetic aperture radar and uh, in LIDAR is the laser detection and ranging. Okay, so the SAR, it is used in the uh, microwave region. LIDAR is used in the visible and infrared region. Okay, so these two types of sensors, basically we will use in our remote sensing purposes. So what are the passive sensors? The remote sensing system which measures the energy that is naturally available are called the passive sensor means it is used the sun energy, okay? So the sun energy is either reflected or absorbed and then re-emitted means the thermal area. So either it will use the reflected energy or the emitted energy, okay? So this is the, there is no reflected energy available from the sun at night. So at night we cannot emit anything because the sun energy is not available. Energy that is naturally emitted such as thermal infrared can be detected by day or night as long as the amount of energy is large enough to be recorded. Okay, so that emitted energy can be uh, sensed either day or night because in night also the earth will emit some radiation. So we can have the thermal images both in day and night. But in our optical images, where the sun is required, we have the images only in the daytime. So what are the passive sensors? Basically it is the optical infrared sensor, means it is using the visible spectrum and the infrared spectrum. So this, that type of sensors are called the optical infrared sensor. So they have basically two type of sensor. One is the panchromatic sensor and second is the multi-spectral sensors. So in the panchromatic sensors cover a wide band of wavelengths in the visible region or near, uh, near infrared light spectrum. So it has only a single band, okay, in the single band and it will cover an entire range, okay. But in the multi-spectrum, it has the different, different bands from 0.3 meter to 14 meter uh, why? Okay. And uh, so, uh, uh, thermal sensor measures the emitted radiation in the thermal region of the spectrum can produce the informative data about the earth surface. So, a thermal sensor can use the uh, thermal energy or the emitted energy uh, from the sensor. And third is the hyperspectral sensor. So. In the hyperspectral sensor, because in the multispectral there are limited number of bands, but in the hyperspectral sensor there are many number of bands, like 256 bands in one sensor. So it has more spectral signature 
in it. Okay, so there are um, different types of passive sensor. One is the panchromatic sensor, multispectral sensor, thermal sensor, or the hyper spectral sensor, which have the different different bands in the uh, in its uh, in the sensors. It means it has the wide variety of the bands. Now, what are the active sensors? The active sensor provide their own energy. Okay, so they can emit the electromagnetic radiations. So these sensors emit the radiation which is directly towards the target to get the information. Okay, so basic examples are the synthetic aperture radar or the lidar. Lidar is the light detection and ranging. So these are called the active sensor. So uh, basically, uh, what is the active sensor? It is the synthetic aperture radar, which is mostly used to create the high resolution images in the microwave region. So what are the basic uh, advantages of the synthetic aperture radar? It is the all weather observer set, uh, observation system and the active system. Okay, because uh, it can uh, have the active sensor so it cannot it can be image anytime means day and night anytime it can image any surface also uh, it has the penetration capabilities it can uh, image through the cloud because it works in the microwave regions in the microwave region in the microwave waves are, can penetrate through the cloud okay so it has the polarimetric capabilities it is sensitive to metallic and artificial objects and sensitive to the geometrical structures. So this is the basic property of the uh, active sensor, which is the SAR, synthetic aperture radar. So uh, we have different sensors and we can have different remote sensing also. So basically our electromagnetic spectrum is divided into the visible near and mid infrared. So here we can divide the sensor like passive and active. Okay, the passive sensor, so it will, uh, uh, capture the solar energy reflected by the surface and it can determine the surface reflectance value. Okay, this is the passive sensor and the visible region, the active sensor is the LIDAR. Okay, this is the uh, light detection and uh, ranging. So it will actually use for the estimation of the terrain height. Okay, so from the uh, formula of the time delay. And second is our, uh, Electromagnetic spectrum is the thermal infrared. Okay, so thermal infrared, what it will do? It will sense the emitted energy. So thermal sensors will use in the thermal infrared region. And third uh, type of sensor, it is used in the microwave region. So in the microwave region also, we have two types of sensors, active and the passive. So active, mostly we will use the synthetic aperture radar or SAR in which microwave pulse is used for the transmission and it is an active sensor okay and it will measure the backscattered data okay so it will basically measure the backscattered data passive sensor it will basically measure the reflected reflectance data through the reflections and thermal infrared will basically measures the emitted energy okay and in the microwave region also the passive sensors are also there which will just measure the emitted energy. In like thermal infrared, the emitted energy will be in the thermal region of the spectrum, but in the passive uh, micro, uh, microwave sensor, it will uh, sense the emitted energy in the microwave region, okay? So these uh, three uh, types of uh, sensors in different, different spectrum, we will use in our remote sensing, okay? The output of these uh, sensors is basically a satellite images. Okay, so we, we have different different type of satellite images. Either the optical image we will get, either the thermal image we will get, either the uh, SAR image we will get. And it can be fitted in different different platforms. Means it can be fitted in can be fitted in the uh, aerial. Means in the aeroplane we can fit the different sensors and we can image any surface. It can be fitted in the UAV and uh, we can take the images. It can be fitted in the satellite also. In the satellite also, we can measure, we can uh, uh, we can fit these uh, sensors in our satellites 
and they can image entire our surface through different different sensors means if we can use the uh, optical images thermal images or star images from the space so uh, these images the basic concept is the resolution so basically what are the resolutions so basically we have the four type of resolution the first is the spatial re resolution second is the temporal resolution and the spectral resolution and the radiometric resolution okay so what is the resolution the ability of the system to render the information at the smallest discretely separable quantity in terms of distance which is called the spatial or the wavelength band of the electromagnetic radiation which is called the spectral or uh, time or the uh, radiometric okay so if we want to separate uh, two targets in terms of the distance or in terms of wavelength or in respect of time or either the radiometric band means in the earth surface if we have two targets and we want to separate uh, separate two targets with the help of any sensor so resolution is called the what is the ability of this uh, sensor so that it can resolve the two target so uh, uh, resolving two targets separately can be based upon the distance can be based upon the wavelength can be based upon the time or it can be based upon the radiometric value okay so we will see and uh, uh, what are that values in different uh, detail so first is the spatial resolution so what is the spatial resolution means it uh, it will resolve two targets in terms of the distances okay so what is its definition this represents the ability of the sensor to detect and distinguish small objects and find detail in large objects okay means the ability of the sensor to resolve two dar uh, two targets with respect to their spatial distance okay means what uh, uh, what is the size of the object means if the if the sensor will able to resolve the two targets separately then it is called the spatial resolution means if the two targets having the distance of 1 meter and in the sensor it is showing uh, the if the sensor is of resolution of 1 meter then it can resolve the two targets separately okay if the objects are separated by 1 meter and the resolution of the satellite is also 1 meter then it can resolve the two target separately then it is called the spatial resolution means in terms of distances so we can see in the images so here it is the 80 meter resolution so you can see it uh, it cannot able to resolve the two targets separately so we cannot see the uh, uh, finer details in the image so this is called the coarse resolution okay so it is the 80 meter resolution so we cannot see the two uh, objects separately if we have the 30 meter resolution then we can see the finer details okay so that is the 30 meter resolution so in this and it is called the mid resolution or after that it is called the high resolution of 10 meter okay so this is called the 10 meter resolution images so we can see some of the details we can see so here you can see these details you can see fine details here you cannot able to see the anything here also you cannot see the anything so that is called the resolution okay so resolution is the ability of the sensor to distinguish two targets separately so in the higher resolution images we can distinguish the different small small objects clearly but in the coarse resolution we cannot able to distinguish the small small object separately okay so that is called the spatial resolution second is the temporal resolution okay means it represent the frequency with which a satellite can revisit an area of interest and acquire a new image okay so what is the frequency of the satellite which uh, with uh, with it can image the uh, same area uh, with a uh, certain duration of time okay so that is the revisit time okay so if it, it will uh, revisit frequently then the temporal resolution is higher like sentinel 2a has a re revisit of 10 days 
means after 10 days the satellite will revisit the same area so means it has the temporal resolution of 10 days means after 10 days we will get a new uh, satellite image of the same area okay so that is means how frequently the satellite is imaging the uh, earth surface okay so that is called the temporal resolution so it is a resolution with respect to time the spatial resolution is the resolution with respect to the distance so it is respect to the time third is the spectral resolution now the spectral resolution is the like the ability of the sensor to distinguish to two targets based on their spectral behavior means based on their wavelength okay means a different different targets have different different um, behavior towards the uh, different wavelengths okay so that wavelengths uh, actually uh, what we, if we have the sensor of uh, sensing in different type of wavelengths means if the number of bands in the sensor is higher so we can say the spectral resolution is higher the, uh, so we can define the spectral resolution as this refers to the number of bands in the spectrum in which the instrument can take the measurement it determines the ability to exploit these differences in the spectral signature so higher the spectral resolution better ability to exploit the differences in the spectral signatures okay like landsat 8 has a number of bands is equals to 8 okay uh, so uh, it has the spectral resolution uh, of 8 and the hyperspectral has like hyperion has the 220 bands so it has the higher spectral resolution because the number of bands are increasing means in a sensor it has different different uh, bands it means it can sense a wavelength characteristics of a target better because it has different number of frequency bands uh, or wavelength bands so the number of bands is called the multispectral it is called the hyperspectral okay so uh, if the number of bands in any satellite is increases so we can see the spectral resolution is increases now third uh, fourth is the radiometric resolution okay so uh, how well uh, what is the radiometric resolution how well does the data record the precise difference in amount of the uh, electromagnetic uh, energy reflected okay means if we have the any energy is there and our sensor is measuring some energy okay so in the sensor it can have it can uh, convert this analog energy into the digital uh, numbers okay so while converting to, to the analog to digital and uh, we have to specify how many number of bits we want means what is the range of the values means energy if we, it will send some energy and we will see like it is the four bit or two bit uh, energy or four bit or it is can be a eight bit data so we can see if it is a eight bit data then means it has the value of two to the power eight okay so how much um, how much values it can be have 256 value means our energy can be represented from 0 to 255 only okay if we uh, we can uh, specify means the energy from analog to digital in 10 bit data so it have it can have the value from 0 to 1 0 to 3 values okay so as the quantization levels increases the radiometric resolution will also increase us. means that we can have the better uh, feel or better quality of the images if it, uh, the radiometric resolution is high so if we can represent the different different radiometric resolution like it can be a one bit two bit three bit mostly the data is now in the satellite images either it is 12 bit or the 10 bit data means the energy means dn values of the images can be 1024 value or 2096 okay so we can analyze different different radiometric resolution like this is the 12 bit data so you can see the 
image is looking good but here you can see it is a 4 bit data so you can see some of the uh, saturation is happening in the images means in the uh, finer details are uh, still there but the energy is not uh, uh, not digitized properly okay here it is the 2 bit means every uh, energy uh, value is either 0 or 1 so it is a 2 bit a so here it is also not good it is the 4 bit data, it is the 6 bit data, it is the 12 bit. So we can see if the radiometric resolution or bit level of the image is higher, then the radiometric resolution will be better. Okay, so but, uh, we have the four type of resolution. One is the spatial resolution, which work on the distance criteria. Second is the time and uh, temporal resolution, which work on the time, means how frequently the satellite can revisit any area. Third is the spectral resolution means uh, how the satellite image has number of bands. It, uh, it is a panchromatic image or multispectral image or it is a hyperspectral image. And fourth is the radiometric resolution means the energy means how what is the bit level of the image means that how the energy is con converted from analog to digital in number of bits. If it is a two bit data, then the uh, image is not good. If it is a higher like 12 bit and 10 bit, then the radiometric resolution is uh, good. So we have different different sensors like uh, in this lecture, we will concentrate only on the visible spec, uh, visible sensors which work on the visible spectrum. So in the visible spectrum, mostly we have the optical infrared sensor. So what is the optical infrared sensor or what is in the optical infrared remote sensing? It is the essentially studying the interaction of the electromagnetic radiation with different objects, with uh, like land, water, atmosphere, which lies between the visible and the infrared. So OIR means optical infrared region. Optical infrared region 0.4 to 0.7 is the visible region, and the infrared region how much? 20 micrometer. So it will work from visible to the infrared region. So 0.4 to 20 micrometer, it will work. The understanding uh, understanding properties of the electromagnetic radiation under various conditions is the fundamental to understanding of the remote sensing, both from technology and application point of view. Okay, so we have the different different uh, 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 electromagnetic spectrum, and accordingly we have different different of sensors. So what the uh, optical infrared sensor will uh, have uh, components, it can have the lenses, mirrors and prisms. Means in the optical infrared sensor, basically it will, gen uh, it will generate the images with the help of the lenses, mirror and the prism. So basically there are two types of the electro uh, optical infrared sensor. One is the photographic and second is the electro optical sensors. So when the photographic is simply the images are transformed directly on a film. That is the old concept. Now and now in the latest uh, our satellite system, the remote sensing, uh, we are using the electro optical sensors. So the optical image is first converted into the electric signal and further process to record or transmit the data. So in the optical electro optical sensors, we can we can have the panchromatic images which have the single band or we can generate the multispectral images which have the multi band. So these uh, uh, optical infrared sensor basically generates either the panchromatic images or the multispectral images or we can say the hyperspectral images also. So how the image formation is working. So what how the electro uh, optical sensor it is a CCD array which is called the charge couple device so it has some of the array means if we have the array mostly of the 8k means it has the uh, 8192 uh, uh, charge couple devices here so it will form one pixel in the ground okay this one ccd as it moves along the uh, ground in the satellite orbit then it will form a image means one it will project in the uh, ground image like this one okay and then with the motion of the sensor it will form a two dimension image okay 
so uh, the ccd is capable of absorbing and sensing very nearly all incident photon energy or uh, radiance so when the sun energy or the solar energy falls into this so it will uh, sense or absorb that photons okay after that the ccd detectors convert this energy into the electric charge so that energy solar energy then we will see we and the photoelectric effect will happen then this photoelectric effect will convert that photons into the electric charge okay the output of the ccd array is continuous electric signal which is generated by scanning the photo sensor in a given order line by line and reading out their voltage so after that it, uh, how it is happening it is uh, as it moves in this uh, direction so a continuous lines will form okay electric charge will form then this uh, voltage is then convert to the discrete value to analog to digital con uh, converter so that and uh, voltage is converted to the digital number through the analog to digital converter then these recorded values like and uh, this and this is the analog energy what i am talking about it will have after taking the images this analog to digital it will digitize like this and it has the uh, these values are called the digital number okay so what is called the dn values so dn in image converted back to minifying energy through the calibration okay so how the entire process will work the solar energy first uh, falls in the linear ccd then it is converted to the electric energy this electric energy is converted to the digital number through the analog to digital converters then this uh, uh, image is formed like and this form and this energy is called the digital these numbers are called the digital numbers okay and now this digital number again because uh, in our uh, scientific analysis we want what is the uh, radiance or the reflectance value of this one means we want this analog value then we we have to do some calibration so that calibration again convert that dn values to meaningful and uh, reflectance or radiance or the solar energy values okay so that is through the calibration so how the uh, image is forming and so the digital image consists of the picture elements called the pixels located at the intersect of each row and column i and j so uh, we will get this type of two dimension array of the any uh, any earth surface uh, through the ccd array as i told with the motion of this uh, ccd array it will it will form a satellite image so these uh, what it is called uh, the values it is called here it is called the columns and this is called the rows okay and every uh, pixel value will have some number that is called the digital number or the gray value so with each pixel is associated a number known as the digital number or the brightness value or the gray value which is a record of variation in the radiant energy in the discrete form so as i told like energy is a uh, sense reflected energy is sensed by the sensor and it will record in the form of the analog and then it is converted to the digital number so in the discrete form it will record it so this discrete energy is called the digital number so an object reflecting more energy records a higher number means if it is white then we have here the higher energy is reflectance so it is called the it has the higher reflectance okay and here it is have the low reflectance okay so and that bright and dark pixel will form the image so bright pixel have the higher reflectance and black uh, portion have the lower reflectance and this is called the 2d matrix of the digital number so what is the image image is a two dimension matrix of the digital number so this is and uh, the case of the optical infrared sensors means the reflected energy is uh, recorded and converted to the digital number same in the case of the thermal and the sar images in the thermal it is uh, same it is sense the emitted energy and it is recording like that one and in case of sar it will send the uh, back scattered energy and it will uh, have some of the processing and after the processing it will convert to the dn values okay 
so the, we have the different different satellite images from the sensors to the different uh, sensors so i am telling about one case of like optical infrared sensors which will generate the optical images so basically we have the uh, and the concept of the ground sampling distance one is the resolution and second is the ground sampling distances so what is the ground sampling distance ground sampling distance is the distance between the two consecutive pixel centers measured on the ground so if, if this is a ccd array so this uh, if it has the size of 7 micrometer so uh, the ccd size of 7 micrometer and this is passed through the lens and it will uh, form a ground sampling distance or some distance in the ground. So how much it will uh, make? So how it will make? The formula is uh, this is forming a two triangles. So one is small triangle and it is a bigger triangle. So from this, we can see the uh, concept of the similar triangles. Uh, we have the formula of the this GSD is equals to this distance, CCD pixel size, into h this is the how much is the high satellite height and what is the focal length of the sensor so if we have the ccd pixel size height of a sensor and the focal length we can find out how much area it will image from 7 micrometer so in case of this four the ccd pixel size is around 7 micrometer and the height of the satellite is 817 kilometer and the focal length is around 920 uh, millimeter so it is forming the GSD around 5.8 meter on the ground. So we can see the CCD pixel of size of 7 micrometer. So a small CCD on the ground, how much it is area it is covering? It is covering the 5.8 meter on the earth surface where the satellite height is 8, uh, uh, 817 kilometer and focal length is 982 millimeter. Okay. So this is the calculation of the GSD means ground sampling distance means what is the distance between two consecutive pixel in the image because each CCD will make one pixel on the ground of uh, image so in, uh, in the satellite image how much it will correspond it will means in the satellite image each pixel will correspond to 5.8 meter for in the case of the list 4 satellite image so we can see the GSD of the list 4 is the 5.8 meter so what is the histogram of the image a histogram is a graphical representation of the distribution of dn values in an image so x-axis shows the gray level intensities and y value shows the frequency of this intensity so this is the histogram so if uh, it has different different dn values so we can have different different gray values in the x-axis and how many times it is occurring then this shows the histogram so this is the uh, histogram uh, of this data so it is the frequency terms here is the frequency and here is the uh, gray values so but for particular gray values how many times it is occurring in the image so it is showing the histogram of this data so a histogram is actually very much essential part of the image to for the image contrast if we want the brightness and any enhancement in the image then we can see the histogram and we can modify the histogram the values and we can change the brightness and contrast in the images okay so uh, basically there are two type of optical images one is the panchromatic and second is the multispectral so what is the panchromatic? It is just like a black and white image. Instead of collecting the visible colors separately, it combines them into one single channel and the sensor can see more light at once. Means if we have the entire uh, visible uh, range is in one single channel. Okay, so it will combine from all energy from all the uh, wavelengths and form a single band. Okay. Then the higher reflectance are the bright pixel and the lower reflectance are the dark pixel. These uh, panchromatic images have higher spatial resolution compared to the multispectral images. Okay, so basically if the sensor, if it has both panchromatic and multispectral, then the panchromatic have the higher resolution than the multispectral images. So this is, we can see the panchromatic image. 
and uh, so brighter pixels have the higher reflectance and that is the dark pixel have the lower reflectance and what is the multispectral image okay so if we have the multiple bands uh, and we can image the any scene with the multiple bands then we have uh, from the single sensor different different bands it means we can uh, have one band from uh, 0.4 micrometer, 1 or 0.6 meter, 0.6 micrometer, and 0.7 micrometer. So we can have three different different bands. Means we can have one red band, one have the blue band, and one from the green band. So three band we can have, and we can form a color images in uh, from the combination of the different bands. Okay. So what are the multispectral images? Multispectral images can have different bands for different wavelength. Means we can have different red band. We can have uh, blue band, green band, and IR band. Okay, different band composition can be made to uh, extract the information of different features of the Earth surface. Okay, we can also rearrange the available band in creative waves and make a false color composite. So basically, there is two types of uh, com composition. One is the natural color composite, and second is the color uh, false color composite. Uh, what is the natural color composite means if we have the blue band green band and uh, red band we will have uh, uh, we will assign the same values and false color composite uh, means uh, we will uh, assign differently in different uh, channels means if we have the nir in the red channel and green uh, green in the blue channel like that if we will create it differently then it is called the false color composite Okay, so what are the different characteristics of different bands? First is the visible band. It will contain the red, blue, and green bands. Contain the information as our eyes see. Means visible band like our our and uh, the colors it will interpret it like our um, eyes see. Okay. Second is the near infrared uh, uh, band. Uh, what is the uh, special about uh, an IR band? The healthy vegetation reflected. Okay. Means if we have the higher reflectance in the NIR band for the healthy vegetation, and because water in their leaves scatters the wavelength back into the sky. Okay, and but as third is the short, uh, short wave infrared sphere band. So in this band, rocks and soils that look similar in other visible bands often have strong contrast in the sphere band. Okay, so rocks and soil has the higher reflectance values. In the uh, uh, higher reflectance value in the sphere band, they are particularly uh, particularly useful for telling the wet earth from the dry earth. Okay, so these are the characteristics of the different bands. So, what is the uh, uh, NCC composition? Uh, that is the natural color combination. Like if we will use like red in the red, green in the green, and blue in the blue. It will see and just make like as our eyes will see in like um, Google Earth images and Google images you can see and the natural color composite images. Okay, so uh, and urban features often appear as the white and gray. Water is the shade of dark blue depending on how clean it is and um, low in contrast and somewhat hazy because blue light more susceptible to scattering. By the atmosphere because it contains the blue band, so scattering is higher. So it has some haziness in the NC. We can see uh, in the NCC image. If it, uh, haze is there, then if we will use the blue band because and the blue scattered the light more, so some haziness will uh, uh, will come in the NCC images if the atmosphere is the somewhat hazy. Okay, so here you can see this is the NCC image. Of Sentinel 2A, this is of 10 meter. So you can see different, uh, like uh, this is the water, this is the green as a vegetation, and this is the open fields and soil. So this is the NCC I mean, As our eyes will see, the image look like that way only. And this is the same area, but the resolution is different. So uh, you can see that this is the landsat area. It is of 30 meter resolution. So in the uh, higher resolution, you can see the uh, features appearing uh, bigger, and clarity is also is there. Here you can see the landscape; the uh, features are looking small because it is of 30 meter 
spatial resolution. It is of 10 meter uh, spatial resolution. So it is three times uh, better uh, uh, resolution of the Sentinel 2A. So we have different different of OIR sensors like Carto Set One. So it has the band uh, single band, band band. The wavelength will uh, have 0.45 to 0.85. This is Carto Set One, and this is Carto Set Two, Two A, Two EB. It is also having the um, uh, band chromatic band and the same wavelength, uh, and it is also single band. The resolution of Carto Set One is 2.5 meter, and Carto Set Two is one meter. And list four, it has the multispectral sensor. It has the green, red, and NIR band, and the wavelength is from 0.5 to 0.59 for the green, red, and the NIR. So this is the wavelength region, and the resolution is 0.5.8 meter. Similarly, list three has the four bands: green, red, NIR, and also the sphere band. Also, the resolution of this list three is 23.5. This resolution means spatial resolution. I am talking because in terms of meter, I am telling. So this is a spatial resolution, and similarly the OIR uh, Carto 2S, it is of resolution of like pan chromatic have 0.6 meter resolution, and it has also blue, green, red, and an IR also. So we have the multispectral uh, uh, as well as pan in the same satellite, and I have seen that pan has a better resolution. So it has pan has the 0.6 meter resolution. And the multispectral same it has the 1.6 meter resolution. Understand? So these are some of the Indian satellites of the panchromatic and multispectral sensors. And this is the foreign satellite like Sentinel 2A, uh, which have different different bands are there. This is the multispectral, and this is the Landsat A. It has also some different different bands, and actually it has also the panchromatic uh, band in the Landsat. So the uh, spatial resolution of the panchromatic band is the 15 meter, and you can see normal visible band and near infrared. It has the resolution of 30 meter, and that thermal band it has the resolution of uh, 100 meter. So in the landsat you can see different different bands. In we have the visible band also blue, green, red. We have the near infrared. We have the short wave infrared, and we have also the thermal band also. And pan is a single band, which is a combination of full uh, 0.5 to 0.68 meter micrometer, and have the resolution of 15 meter. So you can compare the two images, pan and multispectral. So this is the pan black and white image, and same multispectral image. Okay, so it has a better resolution, and multispectral has the coarser resolution. So this is the Haridwar area. Uh, of the pan and multispectral images, and here you can see the thermal images comparison. So this is the TIR band night and TIR band day, and this is the NCC day. As you see, uh, we can see here thermal band. The energy actually, and uh, the ocean is uh, in the day night. The uh, uh, ocean are the actually uh, uh, colder. So it has the uh, heat energy lower. So we are appearing the ocean as the blacker, and land surface has the brighter. So there are the uh, hotter regions. So in the thermal band, in the daytime, you can see it is appearing, and the ocean is appearing as a uh, darker tone, and the land area is appearing as a brighter tone. So this is the area of Mumbai actually. This is ocean and the land surface. So and in the night actually you can see that actually the oceans are the uh, actually warmer than the land surfaces. So in the uh, night time you can see the thermal images. The land uh, land portions are the colder, and then the thermal energy means that we are uh, receiving lesser heat energy. So it is appearing as a black, um, uh, darker tone, and the ocean has a warmer means they are more heat energy. So they are appearing as a brighter. So different different satellite images will have different different characteristics uh, in the in the form of the energy. Uh, either it is a refracted energy, it is a emitted energy, or it is a scattered energy. So basically, uh, now the uh, SAR image you can it, SAR is a diff totally different concept. It has different different processing algorithm. So this is the Sentinel two image of the Mumbai airport, and this is SAR image. Okay, so SAR is basically the images generated by the 
active sensor, which is the radars. So uh, they have different uh, concept of producing the high resolution images, which is the form of the backscattered energy. So here is the reflected energy. It is uh, forming. It is having the backscattered energy. So they, we have to have a different different interpretation of different different images. So this is the optical versus R. So we have seen different optical, SAR, and thermal images in our uh, uh, in our remote sensing images. So uh, uh, actually, uh, before going to the users or for the application, uh, some of the data processing we have to do in the ground station because the data from the satellite uh, comes as a raw. So we have to do some of the radiometric correction and the geometric corrections of the images. Okay. So basically, I will tell in this lecture in the um, basically how the radiometric correction and geometric corrections with respect to the optical images we will do. So uh, what type of preprocessing in the radiometry means uh, imperfections of the sensor if it has like line pixel dropout is there, if striping is there, random noise will be there, or blur is will be there. So these type of radiometric corrections you will be required for the raw satellite data and it is also we have to also correct in terms of the geometric distortions also so uh, we have to do the ortho rectification part so these radiometric and geometric corrections we have to do in every type of images either uh, it is the optical image either thermal image or either the SAR images okay so i will tell you about some of the concept of the radiometric corrections for the optical images so what is the pixel and line dropout so it is uh, due to uh, why it is happening when a detector malfunctions permanently or temporarily means when the CCD detect and detector it will not work properly. So we will not get any energy from that pixel. So uh, simply uh, 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 zero energy will be filled. So it will appear as a black uh, line. Okay. So either a single pixel will uh, defect or entire line will defect. Okay, so we will have either the pixel dropout or the line dropout. So we can do the correction either we will replace by the nearby values or we can take the average values means we will take the nearby image pixel and we can and the, we can take the average of two pixels and replace it by two or either replace by uh, and the nearest neighbor. So if you can see if it will be a, any line dropout. So we can see a single uh, line will be missing from the image. So we can have the black image uh, black uh, uh, line in between the sensor. Okay, so if we will take the uh, average, if we will take this pixel and this pixel and take the average and fill it there. So this line can be removed. So after correction, we will see this is the uh, correction of the line dropout correction. So we will fill these pixels with the nearby values. Another is the striping. The striping actually, we are, as I already told about the CCD detectors, we will have different different CCD detectors and we have different different energy responses. And because each detector will behave differently, so we have different different energy for different different uh, detectors. So there is not a balanced energy. So it will create a striping in a image so uh, how the image will look like like in this de uh, detector is not uh, behaving properly so it will have the lesser uh, energy it have the higher energy so we will have for entire because it is moving in this direction for a particular pixel it will have the uh, lower energy or higher energy for entire this column so we will have the striping okay so this can be corrected by using and uh, the because from the calibration and from the sensor parameter, we have the this curve, which is called the light transfer characteristic of CCD. Means we know how the energy is falling and we can derive this curve. And then from this curve, we can find out the gain and offset. From this gain and offset, we will uh, make the uh, linear relation between the dn and the radiance value. And we can uh, correct the striping in the image. So uh, normalized DL values can be used from the gain and offset. These gain and offset can be uh, done through the calibration. And we can remove 
this striping. So this is the uh, raw image. And after doing some corrections using the uh, uh, using the striping corrections, then the image will look like this is the stripe corrected image, and this is image without striping. And third is the uh, random noise. The sensor can have the different noises in the images. And uh, this it can be a photon noise. So for the OIR sensor, we can have the photon noise, salt paper noise, or the periodic noise. And the SAR sensor, we can have the spectral noise. So these type of noises, which is inherent in the uh, sensors, we have to remove. So in the data processing part, what we will do, we have to remove this uh, noise. Uh, Okay, so you can see this is the image and in the zoom portion, we will have this image. So we can see this some of the uh, uh, values. We have to see some noise is there. And after the noise correction, we can see this noise is removed. So this is the uh, denoised image and this is the noise image. So this type of correction is done, uh, done in the ground uh, processing software in the front satellite centers. So, uh, and they can they will do this type of noise corrections another is the uh, image blur means and uh, due to the motion of the satellite or any imperfection of the long, uh, lenses the image will uh, blur so if this image is uh, like this and if there is the some blur is there so this is a blur function is there then the, you can see how the image looks like this so this is called the uh, if we have to estimate this blur function so this blur function, we have to estimate how much satellite motion is there and how much lens imperfection is there. So we can make this PSF or point spread function from different different techniques and we will apply some of the corrections and we have to de-blur the, uh, uh, the image. So if this is the image, then we can do some of the deconvolution techniques and we can uh, Deep blur the image. So here you can see this is the image, and we can so, uh, do the uh, deconvolution algorithms to do the image restoration. Okay, so that is the uh, radiometric part. Uh, means how the radiometric corrections we have to do. Second is the geometrical correction. So unrectified aerial or satellite image will not show the feature in their correct location because it is a raw image. So we, it has does not have any lat long, nothing is, will be there. And it can also distort it due to the terrain uh, surface and due to the field, means in the how sideways the sensor is looking. So these different, different combination make the image geometrically uncorrect. Okay, so we have to do some of the geometrical corrections also. So ortho rectification is the process which corrects the geometrical distortion caused due to the terrain height and the tilt of the sensor with the help of the digital elevation model, which is called the DEM or the sensor parameter and the sensor parameter. So digital elevation model will give the exact height of the terrain. And using that height of the terrain, we will correct the geometrical distortions in the images. So this ortho image is an image which represents the object in their true orthographic positions. Means due to the, actually due to the height, there is some of the geometrical uh, displacements will be there, which is called the relief displacement in case of optical satellite. So these type of displacement can be corrected with the help if we have the information of, of the height values of the terrain. These height values of the terrain is actually, we will get from the digital elevation model. So with the help of digital valuation model and different sensor parameters like the we know the satellite position. Satellite position means we know the X, Y, Z values and velocity values. And we know the camera parameters means we know the focal length, principal point. If we have the, all the sensor parameters and the digital elevation model, then we can correct the geometry of the images. So that entire process is called the ortho rectification. Means after this ortho rectification, that images in, is in the orthographic projection. And we can directly overlay these ortho, ortho rectified images over our maps. Okay, so these uh, and we can do different different application. Then all the uh, these ortho rectified uh, images we can use in our GIS software also. Okay, so what are the needs of the ortho rectification? We should have the sensor model and we have the dam. 
in the sensor model means we know some of the interior parameters like focal length and other camera parameter exterior parameter like x y z road pitch so the objective of the author rectification is to assign the gray values from the image to each cell of the depth means we have to correct the geometry with respect to the digital elevation model because due to the geometry these pixels are uh, displayed from in the images so we have to put in the correct position with the help of the dam okay so this uh, is called the ortho rectification so if this is the our level one image means uh, raw image then after doing the geometrical corrections uh, we will have the image like this means it is not actually properly oriented also so we will have to have the location of each point with the geolocation algorithm and the interior and exterior parameters with the help of all the algorithm we have to correct the geometry of the sat uh, satellite image so this is the actually the after the geometrical correction uh, we will have and this actually the ortho image will overlay over the maps also so these uh, corrections we have to do the satellite in the satellite images so basically in this lecture we have learned about the uh, different remote sensing concept okay and different types of sensors and what is the output of this type of sensor the output of this type of sensor are mostly the satellite images so how this satellite image form and how we have to do pre processing basically this type of pre processing actually done by the uh, agency means uh, any isro agency they will do most of the pre processing steps okay if anything is left out or any residual is there then we have some of the uh, software to correct it means if the noise is not corrected then we with the help of the software we will correct the noises or to rectification and uh, the type of product they are giving means if they are if we are using the raw product then we can do all the all the things if they are providing the level one then we have to do the geometrical correction if they are already providing everything radiometric and geometric character then directly we can use for our um, any application so it our it, it it is depends on how agency is providing the data it is either in the raw form it is in either the auto rectified form or only the radiometric corrected form so based on on the data we have to do some of the processing if the data is good everything is good then we do need not to do anything in the in data okay so that's all in this uh, lecture uh in our first lecture in which we have learned about the concept of the remote sensing images and the sensors okay thank you